Greetings, my name is Elizabeth Koble. From the provided articles, I chose Anne Miles from Monster to Martyr, representing Mary Dyer. I selected this topic because of readings from last week's class. I was interested in learning more about Mary. I focused a lot of my research on infant mortality since this was tied to her first major crime and what initially brought her to negative light in the eyes of Puritan leaders. Mary was pregnant with her second child in October 1637 when she started having contractions when she was only seven months along. After a long and difficult delivery, the baby girl was stillborn. She was also seriously deformed. Massachusetts Bay Colony Governor John Withrop called the baby the monster. Modern medical assessment of available information, including Winthrop's writings, have tried to determine her maladies. Doctors estimate that the baby, baby had anencephalia and spina bifida, as well as other problems. But to the Puritan mind, these deformities didn't happen by accident. Winthrop and other Puritan leaders concluded that God was angry at Mary. Based on Mary's ongoing activities beyond the loss of her child, it is believed the Puritan leaders said this about Mary since she broke the law and tradition when she publicly voiced her own ideas about religion. Winthrop had 14 children, six with his first wife and eight with his second wife. It appears that at least three died within a few days or weeks of birth, and two more children may also have died as infants. Winthrop knew what it was like to lose infant children. In the healthiest 17th century communities, one child in 10 died before the age of five. In less healthy communities, three children in 10 died before the age of five. So Winthrop's losses are not uncommon. Even though there were no reports of deformities tied to his children who died as infants, there had to be something wrong. With the development of new medical practices, research, education, and technology, understanding the causes of infant deaths, deaths have increased dramatically, while the infant mortality rate has decreased dramatically. Things unexplainable in the 1600s can now be easily explained. But when bad things happen, people often try to assign blame, whether God or the devil or something else. And this may have been the end of Mary's story and her impact on American history and our Christian heritage if it weren't for events about 20 years later. Within a few years of settling in New England, Puritans had to deal with rival religious groups, including the Quakers. The Puritans responded first by jailing Quakers, then burning their books, and finally through physical punishment. In 1658, the Massachusetts Bay Colony changed its laws to make being a Quaker punishable by death. Mary became a Quaker in the mid-1650s. She was arrested with a couple of other Quakers in 1656 and detained additional times until she was found guilty for her faith and hung on June 1, 1660. Between 1658 and 1661, four Quakers were murdered by Puritans. Mary was the only woman. Since 1637, Mary has transformed from being taunted about her deformed dead baby to being harassed for vocalizing her beliefs to being a Quaker monster who had to be eliminated and now seen as a martyr for religious freedom. In the 350 years since Quakers were killed for their beliefs, the view about Mary has changed. The people of Boston recognized her conviction and sacrifice rather than the Purit retain the Puritan hate. A statue of Mary was erected outside the Massachusetts State House in 1959. It includes this quote, My life not availeth me in comparison to the liberty of the truth. <laughs>